Good evening, everyone. Thanks for coming out. Can everyone hear us okay? Definitely me with my voice, but uh, if you let us know if uh, it's hard to hear at any other point uh, this evening. And thank you very much for coming out. I'm Damon Connolly. I'm your uh, Marin County Supervisor representing this area for about the past year now. Uh, so I always like to start by saying thank you for the privilege. Um, and what uh, we're going to do this evening is hear information about the cleanup efforts at Marinwood Plaza, which I know is of uh, great concern to the community. Most importantly, though, what we've tried to do is get everyone we need to in the same room. And by that, I mean the Regional Water Quality Control Board. I'll shorten that maybe to this evening to Regional Water Board which is the agency that will ultimately evaluate and approve any cleanup plan for the site. We also have a representative of the owners here. Uh, we uh, will have him available this evening as well. Uh, we have the, uh, uh, myself, and my role basically is I'm your representative. So what I've tried to do throughout the process is convene folks who are involved in this issue and ultimately serve as uh, your representative uh, as we go forward with this. But most importantly, we have you in the room. And by that I mean uh, this whole uh, process to, is to get your concerns, to get your input. Um, by law, the Regional Water Board, as they go forward with these kind of processes, have to take public input. But I want to say, um, and I appreciate it, they made a point, and it doesn't always happen, of actually coming out to us this time. So beyond us sending in written comments, they're here. They're going to offer um, firsthand what the process is going to involve and also take our input uh, uh, virtually near the site here. And finally, we have uh, representatives from Geologica, which is actually the engineering firm that has been retained by the owners to come up with the plan. So let me uh, mention a few names. So from the Regional Water Board, we have Diane White, Stephen Hill, Laurent Mellier, and Ralph Lambert. From Geologica, we have Brian Aubrey and Dan Matthews. Uh, welcome. From Marinwood LLC, the Plaza Ownership, we have Tom Fitzsimmons. And again, he's representing the owners, the Hoyts. From Silvera Ranch, uh, which is also very interested in this process and is a valued community member for us here, uh, we have Renee Silvera and her representative, uh, Dave Trotter. Oh, welcome, Lorraine, thank you. Very nice to see you this evening. Again, I think we have, uh, we have everyone. So it goes without saying, we've all been frustrated with how this process has proceeded to date and the length of the process overall. I am pleased that we've gotten to this stage where we're reviewing a plan for final cleanup of the property. And again, I appreciate the Regional Water Board from coming to our neck of the woods to hear firsthand what's on our minds. We're going into the field at this point to gather public comment, and I'll note, if you haven't already, please sign up. And also, uh, we have question cards for your use uh, as well, and, and you can also come up and speak uh, live as well if you'd like. If you would like as well, you can always submit written comments uh, up to uh, the deadline and, and perhaps Ralph of the Regional Water Board can reaffirm what that deadline is and how to get those additional comments if you have them uh, to them. Uh, I want to give a huge shout out to the community members who have really taken the lead in keeping this issue front and center in appearing at countless meetings before the Regional Water Board and continuing even to help organize this event. Starting with Bill Mc McNicholas. Thank you, Bill. Let's give him a round of applause. And his team. 
So I believe I speak for everyone when I say we've really appreciated your work. Again, and I stated it earlier, the Regional Water Board is the governing agency with jurisdiction over this process and over final approval of this plan. And they will be recording accepting commentary that we receive here tonight. Tonight, I look forward to hearing information on the plan from the engineers, a presentation from to the toxicologist who is present here this evening to give some information on PCE, which is the chemical we're talking about here, and information on the plan review process, including, very importantly, the timeline. And again, just to emphasize though, the main reason we're here is to hear from you. This is all about the public. I too have raised my own issues, concerns, and questions regarding the plan, and I've actually submitted them in writing to the Regional Water Board, but I've also brought a number of copies here tonight, so please help yourselves to uh, my written comments, and to the extent I personally have any further comments or questions based on what we hear tonight, I'll also be sure to take advantage of our opportunity here and raise them. But again, the main thing is we want to hear from you. So we want to make sure that we remain focused on the task at hand here tonight, which is reviewing the proposed cleanup plan. Although all of us have an ultimate interest in what happens to that property in terms of future possible development or reuse, that's not what we're focused on here tonight. I think you'll agree with me, the first step in moving forward in any manner is to get the property cleaned up. So that's what we're focused on here. And with that, I'll turn it over to uh, get started with our agenda. Bill, who do we have uh, first on tap? Ralph. All right, Ralph. Or Diane. <laughs> Steven? It's July. Okay. Okay. Do we have a printed agenda, by the way? Yeah, yeah somewhere right here. Good. Hopefully everyone has a copy. Geologica is going to present a summary of December's off-site soil vapor sampling. Welcome, Dan. My name is Dan Matthews. I'm a geologist with Geologica, and I have uh, directed the field work at this site since uh, uh, 2008. And the uh, most recent round of work was uh, survey for testing in the Casa Marinewood neighborhood in December of 2015. And I have uh, a brief presentation, if I can find it on the computer. people in the audience here were in the uh, October, November meeting where we talked about previous soil vapor testing work at the site. Uh, we collected soil vapor samples. These are samples of the uh, vapor in the soil uh, shallow depth uh, below the ground surface, which uh, in most locations would just be something like ambient air. Uh, 
in the vicinity of a dry cleaner, it can become uh, contaminated with the dry cleaning solvent. And we collected samples uh, around the dry cleaner, in front of the dry cleaner, and in successive uh, investigations moved to the west as we followed the uh, sampling results to the well, west side of Brinwood Avenue. So uh, in October, uh, when we last met, we had this information at hand and proposed uh, uh, going out in December and collecting additional soil vapor samples, uh, partly to move out into the neighborhood, uh, Casa Marinwood to the west, and partly to collect more samples on the property. So uh, the little squares on the map there are the locations we proposed to test. Uh, approximately two dozen in the neighborhood, the Casa Marinwood neighborhood, west of the site, and uh, additional 10 on the property. Uh, this is a description of our cell vapor sampling procedure. Uh, this procedure is, is developed basically by the uh, Department of to Toxic Substances Control. It's uh, a, a standard, so we tried to follow the standard for collecting these samples. Uh, we had a mobile laboratory out at the site. It's a, it's a van with uh, laboratory equipment in it, and they tested the samples uh, as we were working so they could give us results in, in within generally 30 minutes. Uh, as you see, in the neighborhood, we did not detect the PCE or other, any other products that are associated with the dry cleaning solvent. Uh, had we detected uh, PCE in the neighborhood, we were prepared to collect additional samples, but that didn't become necessary. Uh, on the property itself, uh, we were investigating uh, the idea that the, uh, the vapor from the dry cleaning solvent might move along utility lines like sewer pipes, uh, the storm drain, natural gas, and uh, what our testing showed was that that does seem to be the case, that uh, between utility pipes we didn't find the dry cleaning solvent, but particularly along the natural gas pipeline, which uh, is, comes off the corner of the, uh, the liquor store and goes out to the street, we found this uh, solvent was moving along that pipeline. Eric, you need a pointer, Dan? <laughs> yeah, you have a pointer? Yeah. yeah. Just press the little button. Does it work? You got a red light? Damn. Another one? <laughs> All right, Major, does that one work? Okay. Okay, here we go. So, I'm sorry, here's Brinwood Market, uh, the same more liquor store, and then there's a natural gas pipeline that happens to come off uh, the street and goes into the corner of the building. We found PC along the edge of this uh, uh, natural gas pipeline and also along the storm drain. The detection limit? What is the dry number that we should be looking for? Uh, <clears throat> the detection limit for PCE in these samples was 100 no, micrograms per cubic meter. For the, action level. the action level? Yeah. The action level. The action level, the residential limit is 210 micrograms per cubic meter. Uh, so these values on site, uh, were this to be residential development, those would be high numbers for residential development. And the ND means? Not detected. So the, out in the neighborhood, we did not detect uh, the dry cleaning solvent or related compounds. Yeah. Should I question now or after? You talking question now or not? I'm okay with questions. You know, we're, we're not standing on formality here, but why don't we, Dan, what's your preference on, do you want to get through your presentation and take some questions? Yeah, but, I mean, it's up to you. Uh, yeah. I. It's a short presentation, but you want to ask a question. Go ahead. Yeah, I have a question about this slide. Uh, you mentioned that your suspicion 
is that the uh, vapor go through the utilities line. And you have, I, I am a Maribu resident, and you have a lot of places that you check, but you didn't check on the utility line. So the 2300 that is very high, that is in the door of Casa Maribu, right. that it was on the utility line, right? And if for the, this is what you mentioned the last time that we meet, that it was why it was so hard. Right. Because beside it was 310, but that point it was on the utility line. So why when you went to Casa Maribu, you didn't do the sample on the utility line? What well, that, it was suspicious that, that, he wants. that sample isn't on the utility lines in the sidewalk next to, next, next to the natural gas pipeline. Uh, these samples here are next to those utilities. But they are not on. No. If uh, you are next, they yeah. show, like it happened on Marigold Avenue. So and I uh, don't, I am not too happy with that result because that's an answer. It's on the utility line that follow the yellow line is still or not a vapor gun. Well, uh, these samples here are not directly on the utility line, but uh, if there's something migrating along the line, we see it next to the line. Uh, same process, if, if there was PCE coming out here, we'd see it, if it's, a, if it's moving off of the utility line, it's, we'd see it in the neighborhood. We don't see any uh, gradient that is like disappear. Suddenly we get to pass the and disappear. Now there is no gradient. The only, the only uh, driving force for this is concentration gradients, and uh, there is not, there's nothing but that to push it around. So, so I think that we should retest on the utility line to be sure that it's not in there. Uh, you can make that comment. I think you probably tested as close to the utility lines as utilities will let you. Yeah, right? uh, the, the samples here, uh, I believe this is 109 uh, uh, Grande Paseo and uh, 107. Those were, we had to hand auger because we were so close to the utilities that we couldn't get closer. Uh, that, that's, that's as close as you can get. But, but you had no detection west of the center. That's right. So it's yeah. basically in the center and east of the center at this yeah. point. Can, can I make a suggestion? Clarifying questions are going to be great, but if, if, we, if we spend too much time on each point, Dan's not going to get through his talk. Yeah, so maybe right. just through all of it. Quick clarification, then keep going. Here we go. I was wondering if you checked along the, we use recycled water from the water department. Did you check along those lines? The recycled line, there's one coming in this way. Uh -huh. uh, there may be, there, there are two lines here, and uh, we did sample along here. Okay. Yeah. Do you have a question? Uh, reading would be easier than zooming in. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that, that map is back here. In the back yeah. Here. If you want to read yeah. the numbers, it's posted on. No, I was wondering what was the method you used to pick those particular areas? Uh, yeah, and I was going to suggest that too. If you can kind of give the backdrop on on why those areas were picked with, yeah. with the methodology. Well, the way we started actually was uh, just a parcel map. Uh, and frequently when we're doing an aerial survey, we just step out in a grid. But this time, because we had a suspicion that things were moving along the utilities, uh, we spent two days uh, mapping utilities in that neighborhood. And there are, everything is underground in the Casa Marinwood neighborhood. So water, gas, electric, everything is, is, under, is underground. Most of it is under the streets. Uh, there are some laterals, uh, smaller laterals that run off to each house, and there's also a, a sanitary sewer that runs kind of right through the houses here, so we sampled along that. Uh, there's a storm drain that runs right through the houses here that we sampled along, but, but we tried to take the, the, the parcel map, add the utilities to it, which 
took a lot of effort to do, and then sample along those utilities to see where the preferential flow paths are. I'm sure you could have contacted PG&E and it would have helped you get closer to the utility lines. We do that as a matter of a course, but... Uh, you didn't think it was necessary? I know, we did contact PG&E. They're, they're the good guys. Uh, the, the sanitation and water district, do you have to... They, they, it takes a little bit to get cooperation, and, and they, some things just aren't on the maps. Any further questions, or can I move on? Okay. So, uh, talk a little bit about the remedial action plan. Uh, the plan involves several elements. Uh, looking at those, uh, the, the migration of constituents along the utilities on the property. Uh, one thing we'd like to do is try to cut those pathways in the near term, like sooner rather than later and that would involve uh, cutting trenches across those uh, utility lines and then uh, replacing the, the sand that they typically put pipes in, uh, replacing it with clay. So we wouldn't dig up the entire line, but we'd cut across the line and then replace the, the sand backfill with clay. Uh, the other uh, work element, which is a, a significant work element, is conducting an additional investigation uh, on the Silvera Ranch property and, and further to the east to delineate the groundwater plume, which I'll show you a map in a minute. Uh, and then uh, taking down the building and then digging up the impacted soil beneath the old dry cleaning machine. So those are the major work elements. Uh, the, after we take out the soil, uh, we'd establish new monitoring wells uh, in the dry cleaner and then at locations uh, downgrading to the site to the east to monitor groundwater quality uh, changes in response to removing the, the soil, which is where most of this uh, remaining uh, dry clean solvent is located. It's, it's in the soil. Uh, then uh, after doing the excavation, establishing new wells, we'd monitor the uh, water quality and soil vapor quality and track the progress with that in time to uh, document that, that removing the soil addressed all the issues. And a number of years ago, the dry cleaners itself, they knocked out a bunch of concrete inside, and they spent weeks there uh, pouring liquids or, or cements or something down below. I didn't know what it was. They didn't know when to go in there. Was that just a masking uh, event, or was there actually something being done? You're saying you're going to have to go under the actual store. Well, uh, <coughs> we did that work. And uh, we went into two rounds of treatment. It was about 15 years ago. No, it was uh, 2011. No, this was a long time before that. I'm not. A, I've only been on for eight years, so it was exactly. before that. That's why I really but uh, mm, that I know nothing about. Um, if you want to put that into a comment, I really yeah. Um, anything else? Help. But Dan, maybe you could explain the injection work that you did do a number of years ago? Do you want to just hit on that briefly? Yeah. Because that, I think, is informative. Yeah. Now, what we did do in, in 2011, we had two rounds of treatment inside the dry cleaner where we were trying to in inject a, a liquid treatment product, an oxidizer, just kind of like uh, bleach. I remember that, too. Okay. We, we, cut out, we first tried mm -hmm. just doing holes through the floor and injecting product. Uh, the problem with that was that uh, the liquor store is still occupied and that is very clay soil when we injected this product under pressure it instead of going in to treat the soil it ran sideways and popped up in the liquor store so uh, there, there are more cooperative sites out there <laughs> yeah exactly I wasn't aware that that someone had done work in 15 years ago I haven't but Dan also was successful in the other portion of the property. Yeah. Now, in the liquor store, we had problems with things popping up, uh, which made it, and because we had a tenant there, it made it difficult to get back in to do anything. Uh, outside the liquor store, in a place we call the Eastern Hotspot, which is out by the fence, uh, we did the oxidizer injection uh, and then collected soil samples and documented a decrease in the concentrations of dry cleaning solvent. There, we were able to, to burn the area and force the liquid to go back into the ground. And then, 
have her uh, waiting a, a spell to let the oxidizer exhaust itself, we injected a, a bio, biological treatment product into the ground in that eastern hotspot area. And that treatment has reduced the concentrations of dry cleaning solvent in that area. Uh, so outside the dry cleaner, uh, we clean up the soil. We, uh, I have a chart in the back there that shows how the concentrations and so they from ground were dropped off after the treatment. Inside, we had trouble uh, injecting product because it was coming back up. Uh, any other? So well, long story I short, did the dry cleaner get rid of their solvents in an illegal manner, or do we have lots of dry cleaners in RIN? Do they all follow the same process, dump it in the ground? Well, uh, I mean, just a short story. Yeah. Please. Well, we've looked at the historical practices at dry cleaners because at the regional water board, we are overseeing the cleanup of, of many of them. And we are starting to see a trend towards what was common industry practice. and. And often that did include dumping of material into nearby areas, parking lots and stuff. There was also a lot of spillage that took place with filling of the solvents, you know, in and out of trucks. And then some of the machines were actually designed where the material had to be basically transported and there was a lot of excess dripping that took place. So um, the industry practices in the 50s and the 60s and the 70s were not particularly good was really in the 70s where the fire departments became involved more with doing a lot of inspections, looking for hazardous waste and materials as we then moved into the 80s and to where we are now, we've seen you know, more and more regulations and awareness come into play. So the situation at Marinwood is not per se unusual. This is where a lot of growing awareness of how significant this problem is statewide and nationwide. With so it's happened elsewhere in Marin and it's been cleaned up in a timely manner. Well, some places really there was less spillage. There was no indoor spillage. There was more material that made it into the sewage treatment plant as opposed to the groundwater. And then the groundwater conditions themselves if the soil is sandy versus clayey. So it's, um, we've, we've seen a spectrum all over. Were the Armstrong Garden Centers up in the bottom was a contaminated dry cleaning plant that was, and cleaned, up, that was cleaned up quickly because of the desire to come in. There's lots that aren't cleaned up. In a lot of cases, if it's only the dry cleaner, they have uh, no money, basically. And so there's lots of dry cleaning sites that have not been cleaned up or that haven't even been investigated very well. Thank you. Hey, I also noticed in talking with some of the audience beforehand that some of you are, are new to this process, and I apologize, we kind of jumped into this very technical, isolated aspects of this cleanup. So I did want to point out that there is a fact sheet here which you know, gives you some more history and an overview, and we'll be happy to talk to you more about that. But seeing the audience now, perhaps <coughs> I'm thinking we should have started with a bigger picture here of the history and then moved into this. So apologize about that. I'm happy to pass one of these to you now. They're on the table. <coughs> we can also get you on a mailing list if you're not on so that you can be mailed this kind of material as well. So this is like a quick overview of the, the site and the history. And I think it's also important to note that the owner is always responsible. So legally, even if it chain of custody, the property ultimately is purchased by someone else, that original owner remains responsible. They can work out an arrangement amongst themselves, but vis-a-vis -vis you and me, that original party is always responsible. And who is taking the documentation from one owner to the next owner to the next? So apparently 15 years ago, something was done, but it wasn't documented because they do it now again. The same well, first of all, it's, a, it's always been the same owner throughout the relevant, actually even far longer. Second of all, this has been involved in a process for years and years. Mm -hmm. Frankly, it's coming more to your head now. Um, that's what we need to keep pushing. But there's a history there, as, as I think a lot of long-term residents know. So, um, okay, so Dan. All right, uh, let me continue. Uh, I would note that the 
cleanup is the cleanup is expensive, and in most cases, the cleanup costs are borne by the property owner, not the dry cleaner. And uh, the the cost has, in most cases, comes from redevelopment, uh, from sale of the property. Uh, so uh, this property. Why is that? Is the responsibility of the owner to clean up. Why is it way to be sold and developed to make somebody do something? Cash, money to do the work. That's, that's, that's what drives the cleanup process in a lot of cases. So the Hoyt family is uh, claiming poverty, they can't pay for it? <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> Let's not jump to the end yeah. of the story. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, no one's getting out of responsibility, right? Yeah, but they formed a separate so, LLC. Does that get them off the hook? So let's the continue family? with what needs to be done and then reemphasize, as we hear from our regulators, What's going to happen to ensure that? Well, isn't part of it to keep people from being harmed from this and not save money? I mean, for real. Yeah. I mean, is there any and, and, and what you've told us now, you have a chemical problem. You have new data where this is spreading. Right? I mean, that's a, that's a sense of urgency right there in any matter. I think the company is playing why we are here. It's a proposal that it was. The owner was asking to write a proposal to clean up. And they did a proposal through Geologica, and they are delivered it to the water board. The water board need to accept or reject. Some people in the community see a problem in that, in that proposal. So we are here to listen what they have to offer, and we will say if we accept or not, to recommend to the water board to accept or reject. I so don't let's pretend to be an expert, so I'm listening. No, 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 I mean, no, part of it too, though, Beth, is to, to reinforce the sense of urgency that there's real world concerns out there on the street. So your presence here is very important to do this. I have a quick question, if you don't mind. I, I've lived here quite a long time, and there was a similar problem here at Chop Semiconductor across the freeway close. And they had bad pipes out there for years and years and years and years. And now it's called the Vineyards, which I think is kind of a crazy name for that development. But, um, I'm a little concerned about the, the liquor stores right there at Ground Zero. And here we have two, a, a couple who's been there forever. They're, they're wonderful people. And they're sitting on top of the plume. They're stuck. And they're stuck there. And the roof's falling down. And it doesn't seem like the, the owner of the property really gives a about it. And somebody needs to be concerned about their welfare too. Not only Castle Brenwood and the Sparrow Ranch and everyone around, Miller Creek too, what's the effect there? This is probably a lot bigger than people are real interested. Well, the Kershaw yeah. property wasn't changed, wasn't fixed until somebody came in to buy it with money to clean it up. So it seems as though the purchase and change of ownership is that what drives the cleanup? It should be the reverse. Well, should we hear the rest of the cleanup? Yeah. 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 These are all really good yeah. key questions. Yeah. Uh, so, moving along, uh, this is just uh, a close up of the area that we're going to be doing cleanup work. Uh, we'll be digging under the former dry cleaner and then. Uh, out in the parking area to the west of the dry cleaner, we'll be cutting trenches to cut off these uh, the soil vapor migration along these uh, utility alignments. So that is uh, work that will be happening as soon as, as the, this remedial action plan is approved by the uh, regional board. What is the brown in this map? Uh, the brown is this area here is the extent of the soil vapor, the PCE and soil vapor. Uh, Dan, where's the so-called eastern hot spot? Eastern hot spot is out here, was out here. It's no longer a hot spot. Well, the question is, uh, why is that not slated for excavation <coughs> as well? Because it meets uh, soil cleanup standards. Uh, my theory and why we're still seeing so vapor concentrations out here is that it's it's coming off the dry cleaner itself. 
you but said there, uh, you said there was something that's poor and it's not there now. Right. Well, it must have gone somewhere, I imagine. We treated it. That was the area that we treated. And we were, were able to get treatment product in, and we we have tested the soil and found that it's the concentrations of uh, the dry clean solvent have, have gone down to below the levels that uh, are required for the cleanup. So that part of the site, uh, the soil doesn't need treatment. It's it's just under the dry cleaner that, that hasn't been treated yet. How often is that check? Is that same spot checked? Is Quarterly. It, that yeah, we're still checking. Check we're still checking. So how can you be sure that you're stopping? I mean, how how much will you be able to continually watch those spots that where you think you've stopped it from coming, say, into Casa or across that street? Those well, the, we'll those, uh, those cut off. After, after we do the excavation, we'll put in wells to monitor. So there'll be additional monitoring points mm -hmm. installed after we do the excavation to <coughs> monitor that. So and we would continue sampling to document that the concentrations go down. So we would continue watching that. So have you, have you cleaned up other situations like this? Yeah, there are dry cleaner sites. That, well, I know there are, yeah. So yeah. we've been involved in this. Yes. And, and are you still checking on those sites? Is that something that would be ongoing for us? It wouldn't be forever. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, you know, we would we would check until we document that everything is is where it should be, mm -hmm. and then we'd ask to stop. But we would check. That and, that's in the plan. And how can you be sure that you've gone deep enough to really uh, to make sure you you found all the damage? You can tell that from the monitoring data. Mm -hmm. if, if the concentrations don't go away, then or something's still there. So this isn't this isn't really easy to read on, on the big projector, but these locations out here are where we would have new groundwater monitored wells. There'd also be a new well at the location of the old dry cleaner. So, so we remove the soil and we install wells to monitor and we continue monitoring until regional board agrees that the, the problem has been resolved. What are the levels on the ranch? On the ranch, uh, the concentrations out here, we found uh, the highest is around 40 micrograms per liter of PC and groundwater. Uh, on the edge here, uh, it's around five. How many times over is 40? I forget what the original number is, but say. The drinking water standard is five. Five. So 40 is a significant number. Yeah. So do you have to level the center completely to take care of this? You can just dig under the dry cleaner and remove the soil. Yeah. Well, you're, you're feeding into the next slide. Yes. Uh, realistically, uh, because we'll be digging an excavation uh, 15 feet deep, uh, maybe a little deeper, right under the dry cleaning machine. That's going to require uh, a track hoe, and I can't drive a track hoe into that building. You know, we have to take the building down. We would take the building down and leave the slab. Uh, the demolition would be done what by the would market. not the market. Not the market. <laughs> they're, they're actually <laughs> two. They're two they're they're Alex and Jen are just kind of screwed. They move out. The they are tenants that'll have to be moved. To, to do that work, but those are two separate buildings. The, the, the buildings that the dry cleaner in is, is separate from the, the grocery store. Dan, why didn't that schematic show uh, PCE hits on, on the south side of the creek into our property? Did you get PCE readings into our corral area? This edge here is at the drinking water standard, five parts per billion. Uh, we have detections, I think two detections below five parts per million on the property, but we didn't include them in the edge because uh, they're below the, the cutoff. But it's important to point out that at present, you are seeing the CD, so I'm going to agree. Okay. Um, I was just going to mention, you've also sampled several samples in the creek that were non detect and uh, as you mentioned earlier, you plan to do more delineation of the plume. Uh, 
in different directions <coughs> and the sample of the tree can get. So when you say it is five, it should be CE or DCE, uh, DCE to? Uh, on the edge here, yes. the, the sum is less than five. There's uh, just PCE or PCE plus DCE? Plus, plus, six. All, all together? Yeah, all, all together. Yeah. PCE and the yeah. dog yeah. okay. You might mention the wellhead treatment. Uh, we also have installed a wellhead treatment system on one of the wells on the Severa Ranch property. That is operating now, and we've tested it twice since it was installed. Uh, the first sample had, uh, I think it was 0.6 uh, micrograms per liter PCE uh, going into the system and nothing coming out. Uh, the second set of samples, nothing was detected in either sample, which is, uh, the detection limit is about 0.5, so 0.5, 0 0.6 is, is, is a low concentration. <coughs> So these tests, do you, do you do all these tests in your van, or is that real accurate, or are they sent somewhere else to be confirmed? Uh, the water samples go to a, a fixed laboratory, and the, all these labs are state certified, so they are as ac accurate. They're not like a field kit. So it looks like the plume is like right up against the creek, but just not quite getting to it. Uh, <laughs> if I can get back to that figure. I mean, it's good that it seems to be going where no people are yet. Sure. And you might also match the depths, too. The, the creek's at one level, the flume's at a deeper level. The, uh, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, the, the creek is, is um, generally above elevation uh, 10. And the zone where we see the PC and groundwater is deeper. It's just a quirk of the way that the solvent is moving in groundwater, but uh, it's generally running below the creek. It could, could be getting diluted. And it could get diluted. Uh, the, the, I mean, it's not going away. It's all somewhere there. Or in the air. Let's see if I can get back to the slides. All right. <laughs> All right, so the plume may may go under the creek at some point, but it, what we have so far is that it, it seems to be following a transect north of the creek, uh, and that's probably driven by geology. They're, they're, uh, the way uh, the gravels and sands were laid out long, long time ago uh, is, is, is driving the movement of the, of the plume and not what you see now. So is there any damage over on the other side of the creek? Or is there any testing over there? Other side of the creek to the south? Yes. Or the east. In the east. So uh, okay, well, then, that's, that's the next. The next. And why don't we, uh, for the east. Why don't we um, continue with Dan's and again, Believe me, most of the night tonight's going to be public comment. So, and I think you might have a, a broader context once we hear uh, <coughs> the other presentations. Although these are great questions, by the way. So, thank you. But why don't we uh, keep going, Dan? So, if this, is, this is my last and Please slide. write down any questions you have, or, or again, clarifications. Feel free to uh, ask right now as well. Just one, what do you mean that the one, month one, when is month one? Which? Month one is when regional board approves the plan. But it is not in the process, in, the, in your proposal, this schedule. It's an attachment. It, it's in the, it's in the, yeah. the this is right out of the rack. It's in okay. the yeah. remedial act. Uh, figure 18, 19, 19. Okay. Yeah, that, that's, uh, there is preliminary work we have to do. There is a process for uh, demolishing the building, which we don't control. Uh, permits and, and uh, asbestos abatement and, and uh, getting approvals. But uh, once the building is taken down, we'll dig up the soil under the dry cleaner and, and uh, then begin monitoring. So you are, you are saying that after seven months, you want to clean up? 
Pardon? You are saying that after seven months, you can still have to do all the good excavation. This, this could be shorter, it could be longer, it depends on how long it takes to get the building demolished. But, what do you mean but, longer? Well, that, is, that is what we, I mean. We estimated six months, this is, this is our plan. If we can get out there sooner, we'll get out there sooner. How about if you get later? What the water board will do if they don't over this timeline? We're, we're going to get to that in a minute in a moment. Okay. Yeah, let's let's keep the whole presentation, yeah. please. So, uh, that's all I have. Uh, All right, Dan, yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you.